So this module, I'm titling it as Truly Deep Work. And it's a playoff of the um, phrase deep work popularized by the book of the name by Cal Newport. And I've read the book. Um, and basically, it's been a couple of years, but basically the book suggests different ways to put distractions aside uh, so that you can spend more spacious time going into your flow state when you're working. Um, because you probably have noticed when you uh, when you do do some work, it takes you some time to get into kind of this flow and then or the, some kind of trance is what I call it. And once you're into the flow or trance, it kind of it smooths out the work itself. It's more, you know, you're you're in momentum, some people call it. Uh, so deep work from Cal Newport, the book basically goes into different ways of creating flow state. Um, now, why am I calling this, this lesson truly deep work? Because work has typically been defined as a means to an end. You work so you get results, so you get income, so you make an impact even. But that's also the work itself is so that something else happens. And so when you learn about deep work and flow state, it's, um, it's still this idea of doing work excellently so that you have great results. And they kind of suggest that maybe the flow state might be worthwhile in itself, you know, maybe. Um, and it'll be great if it does, but still we're just trying to get shit done. Okay, right. And so I'm going to suggest. So so basically, you know, if you if work is a means to an end, right, then you you do it, you get the stuff, get the shit over with as fast as possible. This is where automation comes in, outsourcing, um, different productivity hacks and tips and tricks, right? Or or, or you make it fun. You, you you put on a candle. You put on some music. You you nice nice environment. You uh, try to make it a game. Um, this is what people mistakenly think of as joyful productivity. <laughs> and some of you may like. I signed up for this course because I thought that's what this was about. How do I make work fun, like not painful, not suffering, but fun? Sure, we may have a few things for that, but it's still not the true meaning of joyful productivity. So joyful productivity is not, not even about the flow state. And it's, it, sure, it helps. And it's not about make, getting shit done as fast as possible. And it's not about making it as fun as possible. Those are all helpful, shallow band-aid, you know, solutions to life is suffering, <laughs> okay? But here's another perspective. Work is love made visible and you may recognize that quote from khalil gibran work is love made visible and that changed my perspective about what is possible with work and let me define what work is work to me is not the flow state we finally get into and oh my god i'm really into momentum now i'm it's working <laughs> right no Sure, that's great. That's maybe part of work. But as a purist about productivity, I think work is actually the conscious effort before the flow state. Think about that. In a single hour of writing or doing your taxes or solving a tech problem or meeting with a client, preparing a meeting, whatever you're doing, chopping wood, carrying water, in the hour of the action, there's several states that happen. Uh, eventually, we get into a flow state. We're like, oh, the chopping wood is now, you know, the, 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 the writing is now like in flow. I'm, I'm seeing it work, right? It's, it's, it's happening. I'm, I'm enjoying myself even. That's wonderful. And, but how do we get there to the flow? I mean, getting there to the flow state, read, you know, Deep Work by Cal Newport. He has some tricks around that. But the... Moments before the flow state is what we all 
recoil from, right? Like that's what we resist and avoid. It's the getting into it, the momentum. Oh, I don't want to lose momentum because I have to get back into it. Well, what if the getting into the momentum, the conscious state, because when you're in the flow state, you're in trance, you're, in, you're hypnotized, you're, you're no longer conscious. Isn't that interesting? When you're in the trance or flow state, you're no longer conscious. You're just doing the stuff. It's natural. It's fun. It's fulfilling. That's like you're now asleep. You're no longer mindful. And we all want to get there because we just want to get the shit done and get hopefully have fun along the way. But if you notice, much a lot of our life, our working day isn't the flow state. And, and to even get into the flow state requires that first stage of the conscious effort before the flow. That, if we could figure that segment out, it's, it's life-changing. I mean, it's world-changing, really. Right, like then we will no longer avoid work. We will no longer recoil from work, no matter how hard the work is. The hard work. We're all always talking about that first segment, right? It's like no matter if you're like hauling bricks for a living or something, which hard work. But eventually you get into a flow. Eventually you get into momentum. But like thinking about getting up and like starting to haul the bricks, or whatever, how, however haul, hauling bricks work, whatever. But the hard work or or the men hard mental work of like trying to solve this tech challenge. The first segment is what we're going to, we got to work on. And that is where truly deep work can happen. That's really where love happens. Like, because you're conscious and, and, and love is conscious work. I, I mean, if you're, if you're with a loved one who is pleasant and easy to be with, is that really love? Or is that just natural abundance of enjoyment connecting with someone? That's not really love. That's not spiritual love. That's not you know, love is like when you're wiping someone's butt, you know, because you're caretaking for them. That's love, right? Like love is the conscious work of extending yourself for someone else's well-being and growth. That's from World Less Travel, right? One of my favorite books, right? The love is the conscious effort of extending oneself for someone's spiritual growth, is what the what the book said. But but I would say for someone's well-being and, and growth and ultimate, you know, uh, yeah, all, all ultimate goodness. So work is love made visible. So work is really about the first segment before the flow. And how do we bring love and spirit into it? Because if we're, if we're only saying, oh, I can only be in love, work is love made visible when I'm meeting with my clients. But see, that's easy shit. Everyone is in love when they're doing the fulfilling work of meeting with their clients and you know if you love writing i don't love writing so writing is love for me you see what i mean i love being on video this is not love i mean i can try to bring love into it but this is easy for me it's not really love it's this this stuff is easy like for me talking on camera is easy now right that's nothing love for me is like <laughs> planning my next launch or figuring out why is this automation not working or um, doing my taxes, you know, that is where love is needed, right? This stuff is, sh this shit is easy, you know? So like there's, that's in your work too. You have some shit that's easy and that's like, yeah, you can bring some, some more happiness to it and bring some more grace to it. Sure. But that's easy. The shit that's hard is where work is love made visible. So, um, <laughs> so what I'm saying is to reframe work itself, especially the segment before the flow, as a sacred practice. That work itself, what if it's not a means to an end, but that there's some deeper meaning to that conscious action of love the conscious action of bringing grace or bringing forgiveness or bringing of yourself to bring, you know, bringing, you know, gently setting this inner critic aside. That's, that's, that's work too, right? Love me visible. Thank you, inner critic. I'm trying to write here. I'm trying to create here. And I know you care about me. I love you. And please set, please sit over here. I'll take care of you later. That is the work. Love, love me visible too. So whatever work is for you, right? Like, like, um, and, and the more you can say that 
the segment before the flow is itself worthwhile. Let, let me let me um, explain what I mean by this. Like athletes are amazing because they have essentially reframed the pain of working out, the pain of exercise as itself good and worthwhile. Like that's why they're an athlete. Right, like how how does someone become an Olympic athlete or just a just a, a pro athlete? They have to work out a lot. They have to exercise a lot. Do you think all that stuff is fun for them? Probably not a lot of the time. There's a lot of flow, sure, when they're like on the ski slopes and whatever. But like the 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 push ups and all the things they have to do, at least the beginning of it, it's not fun. But they somehow reframed it as worthwhile, as like there's it's worth it. I'm growing myself. And maybe, yes, maybe they're quite attached to the results, but like the best athletes frame the work itself as being worthwhile as a personal development exercise, right? So, so, so the, for, for us non-athletes, <laughs> think of it as stretching itself can feel good. You notice that stretching itself can feel good. Like that's like the gateway. Like, oh, that feels good to stretch. What else could feel good that's good for me? Like that's not something I, know, I typically do or would naturally do. Could, could running be good for me? Could jogging be good for me? Yes, it's good for me. And can I find a way to enjoy that pain um, and, and to reframe it as, could push-ups be good for me? Yeah, push-ups are good for me. Could I reframe that as somehow pride or, or, or something deeper, the exercise, not just thinking about the muscles or the, or the, or the fitness, but to think about the, the value that I can infuse into, into that effort. So that's physical athletes. <clears throat> Mental athletes have done the same thing, right? How can I infuse my values into the hard work of writing or solving this tech challenge or doing my taxes or planning this thing or solving this problem? Like how can, how can this solving process itself be good for my brain and creativity <clears throat> and bring goodness into the world. Emotional athletes, same thing. You live with someone difficult or you deal with people that are difficult or you have difficult situations. You have, you're dealing with your past trauma or whatever it is. And, and the emotional work and the emotional labor of life, are we recoiling from it? Are we just going to resist it? And like life is supposed to be vacations and, and hobbies. Or can life and the emotional work that's involved be itself love made visible? And we are athletes of joyful productivity, right? <laughs> that's what we're. That's what we are. We are athletes of that. I'm. I'm encouraging us to be. So, general remarks here about <laughs> what work really is that segment before the flow and how we can see deeper meaning in that segment, that hard work part of the, the, the time. How can we see deeper meaning into it? And if we see deeper meaning, then we aren't as attached to the results because that itself is worthwhile. We're not even attached to how soon can I get to flow? Because if we do that, then again, we come out of seeing that moment as, a, as itself worthwhile. And so there's this quote that changed my life, really. And it's from the Bhagavad Gita. And it goes, to action alone hast thou a right and never at all to its fruits. Wow. To action alone hast thou a right and never at all to its fruits. So the, 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 the profit that comes, the income, the, the impact on the world even, or even the flow state, that's a fruit of your action too, right? The fruit of working hard to try to get into the flow state, that itself is, am I hoping for the flow state or am I just trying to appreciate the hard, the hard work in itself? And when you are able to find the meaning and appreciation of the hard work, maybe the work is no longer hard in a philosophical sense. It might be hard physically or mentally or emotionally, but you found a, 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 another refuge right, in, in the deeper meaning of, of that hard work. So let me go, continue with the quote. So to action alone has thou a right and never at all to its fruits. Let not the fruits of action be thy motive. Let not the fruits of action be thy motive. 
and neither let there be in thou any attachment to inaction. So don't be lazy either. Don't be lethargic. Don't be in, don't be in inertia. So don't don't like chase the fruits of action, but also don't be don't sit on your don't 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 be depressed. Don't be dep Try not to be depressed and doing nothing because there's not there's no point. No, don't don't be um, uh, what do you call it. Um, uh, meaningless life is meaningless kind of thing right don't don't be that so final the final quote is for by working without attachment one attains the supreme and i'll just drop a couple words here um and i'll move on because we have a lot to talk about um and from this philosophy comes three words or the three gunas g-u-n-a-s there's the three qualities of action or nature or, or, or universe tamas tamas t-a-m-a-s is lethargy in action, depression, darkness. It's not all bad. It's sort of like the yin of the Tao, right? Tamas uh, is, is sort of like doing nothing, like lethargy. Rajas, R-A-J-A-S, is attachment to the fruits, materialism, experience, hustle, anxiety, over overexertion, action, over workaholism, rajas. Like, now, tamas, on the one hand, is like, uh, there's no point. I not doing anything. Rajas is like, oh, I got to chase everything. I got to hurried, rushed action. And then there's sattva, which is sort of like this melding or, or harmony of the two and a higher intelligence of calm, wise action, which is actually seeing the meaning and the spiritual growth within the hard work itself and not so much attached to the results because the results are up to God or up to the universe, right? Up to natural forces so so karma yoga is another way of, of of putting it right so those are some general thoughts about work and let's talk a little bit about uh well I'll, in the next segment i'll i'll say a bit more about this